Hi fellas, welcome to this new video about EPOS. This is August 2022 and we've just released an update for EPOS which includes a few new options that you should really like. Importing image sequences. EPOS will allow you not to import an image sequence and turn it into a bold sequence with several shots and drawings. This image sequence can come from any drawing software. Toon Boom Storyboard Pro, Photoshop, Calipeg, Krita, whatever. What matters is the naming pattern of the sequence. As an example, if your image sequence is named like that, you will have to type the following pattern to automatically create a bold sequence containing two shots and made of one plane with two drawing each. If your image sequence is named like this, you will have to type the following pattern to automatically create a board sequence with two other board sequences, each made of two shots with one plane containing two drawing each. Image sequences can be made of PNG, JPEG, TGA. However, we advise you to import a sequence made of a translucent image, especially if you need to place the drawing in a 3D environment later. Exporting a storyboard. It was already possible to export a storyboard made with EPOS as an image sequence or a video footage, but the system has been improved to be easier. First of all, there is the Storyboard Render queue, which now includes two default MPMC files. The one that uses the Unreal Engine plugins Movie Render queue, Avid and Epoperes, and the one that can use the additional library FFmpeg for a customized render. By the way, Note that if you are on Mac just like me, you shall use the FFmpeg version only, as both plugins Evid and Epoprares of Unreal Engine won't work on macOS. Don't worry, there is already a lesson about it in Epo's guide in the lesson 11. In addition of the storyboard render queue, there is the storyboard export image sequence, which will allow you to export image sequences with specific patterns. In this panel, you can even choose which key images must be rendered as panels. It can be all the drawings, only the first frame of the shot, or marked images in the shot sequence. And if necessary, you can also select specific panels by hand. Small GUI changes. In addition of the new great features, EPOS interface got improved a little bit. For instance, there are new icons to make the difference between adding new notes and adding new planes within a shot. The option named Create a Storyboard is now named Start Storyboarding in order to prevent any confusion between the action of drawing the storyboard and creating the asset, bold sequence and its private folder. There are also two shortcuts to navigate once within the shot view, which is, you know, the view you get when you double click on the shot sequence. The default shortcuts are U to step to the next shot and Y to step to the previous shot. To edit the shortcuts, go to the editor preferences, type next shot or previous shot and find it in the category EPOS editor before assigning a new key. Last but not least, when using the viewport rotation here, the composition overlay will also rotate with the viewport. And what about Iliad? Well, actually, Iliad also got updated recently. This version 0.11 mostly benefited from minor bug fixes, especially that annoying one that will not let you compile your video games. Everything's fixed now and ready to be installed for Unreal Engine 503. That's all folks for today. Before you leave, I would really like to have your opinion about doing live sessions every Friday, 4 p.m., 6 p.m. CEST, where I could answer all your questions, either in French or in English, about how to use our tools Iliad and Epos. I don't know yet if it's going to be on Twitch, on Discord, or maybe on YouTube. Or maybe there is no need at all to do such live sessions. So, anyway. Please let me know your thoughts in the comment sections or on Discord, for it could be both fun and instructive. Thank you very much for watching this video. Take care and see you soon!